What is up YouTube and we are back with another Rift Guys Water Rift video and we have the top one Shen on the Chinese server here. Something that we need to talk about is, uh, let's go back for a second, let's do a little bit of a rune review, okay? So first up, against Aatrox. What you can do to make the matchups borderline unplayable for Aatrox, in this row here, in the bottom row, you take Perseverance. The reason is Aatrox abilities have so much CC that you are provided with so much armor, it's actually insane. The next thing that you can do is actually take Second Wind. These are just some few things you can do into, for example, Aatrox or Riven, which make the matchups a lot easier to play. You should give it a shot and tell me how it's went in the description, uh, description in the comment section below. Good morning, Gavin. Home plating being proc'd already. So easy to lose it against such champions. Just not a fan of having it. And then he's respecting the early game pretty well. Just staying far, far away. Just making sure to not uh, lose too much HP. Walks up, gets the minion, goes away and taunts away. Something that's very, very important uh, towards playing Shen is understanding your passive, how powerful it is. Understanding your first ability and understanding your second ability. Like Shen has a lot of interesting mechanics in, in this game that are um, completely underappreciated. If you drag your sword through a champion, you gain bonus attack speed and bonus damage compared to the normal first ability. And this is quite cool. Because it completely changes traits because you're really overpowered at that moment. Not only this, you have your second ability which blocks auto attacks. And I think, but I'm not 100% certain on this, it also blocks auto attacks on turrets. Like, not that the turret is hitting you, but if you place it on top of your turret, it can't be hit by an enemy champion. I'm not 100% on this. If anyone is playing a lot of Shen, I think I've seen it before. So if, if you have like confirmation of this, just feel free to share it. Taunt going in. Ooh, look at this sweet little sidestep he did to just pick up, uh, this, just pull back the sword through the Aatrox. He pops Ignite to deny him the crab. To then now return to deal with the cannon and then contest this one here. And now he wins the trade because he has too much damage. Aatrox has to flash or he dies. Ooh, that was really, really reserved. I would have probably panicked, not gonna lie. We need to be mindful. Aatrox level 5 now. He could get turned on if he doesn't hit a good taunt. Oh well. Bye bye. <laughs> Poor guy. Plated steel caps and another ruby crystal. So the question is, when is he going to pick up any form of anti-healing? Because now he's obviously... Ooh. Barely saved that guy. No way. The one HP dream. Ah, oh, he found uh, the blind monk. <laughs> Oh, we got the Lilia, the Eepers. But she needs to be really careful. She just hit by two spells. She nearly dies from this, by the way. And here's to dance in front of the Lilia. To, uh... Okay, Lilia, why do you pick up fruit if you want to recall anyway? You just leave. You just go out of vision and leave. No reason to yoink the fruit. Yeah. Good one. You showed too long. But the Lee Sin griefed so much. Because he might have gotten a kill, but he got he got killed himself as well as giving over the assist gold pool on top. And Lilia wanted to base anyway, and the Lee Sin doesn't gain any particular advantage over this kill. Yeah, Perseverance would have helped so much already. As well as second wind. 
These are the moments where I would love to um, have a little talk with them. Okay, what's your reasoning for taking this over this or this over this? Isn't it just better to do this, mathematically speaking? He's completely neglecting. Okay, he completely gives up everything top lane for the sake of his team. He just gave up everything for a potential, like, to, to make sure that his team wins on one side. And now he's going for a Sunfire Rush? Really? Why Sunfire? I mean, Shen's base damage is insane. Oh, hello, Lux. Good day to you. Oh, nicely done by the Lux waiting for the Shen to go away to hit him with uh, the Binding. She just didn't throw it, she just waited patiently. And again, finally enough, um, I think he lives if he has Perseverance, because he just takes so much less damage, because um, as of this point, it's probably like 23 armor and like 23 magic resist, which makes a big difference towards Lux, because Lux has uh, Prophet's Pendant as well. Definitely um, something you should generally take a look at. So I'm assuming he went for Sunfire because uh, of Wave Clear. That's my assumption. Another product to play here, picking up uh, a kill or assisting in surviving. Now using the Hex Gate to go back. And looking to hunt on the Aatrox, who's uh, beefing with the Lilia. Lilia puts him to sleep, walks very, very far away. Oh, Lilia needs to be so careful. Plays max range, secures the kill, pretty nicely done. Pretty interesting. I haven't seen Sunfire Shen in a hot minute, especially into teams that don't really have percentage damage. Um, I guess he he maybe thinks that uh, if he goes hard steel, that Aatrox just goes divine and it's over for him, or he just doesn't think the hard steel, in a sense of selfish top lane item, is going to help him in, like too much, because he rather prefers having another tool to wave clan than all around. Just trying to make sense of uh, his itemization because now anti healing is a, is a clear choice. Uh, he's dealing with an Aatrox, Aatrox shields for an infinite amount, so he has to make sure that he doesn't uh, full heal after one auto attack, and therefore we have the Bramble Vest. Mm, Katarina with a rotation here, standing behind the Aatrox. She's trying to yoink, you know, she's just yoinking golds. She can't even call it a rotation, it's just. Uh, a uh, little attempt of stealing resources away. Yoink. And we have the little Tito with the devil skin, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, the devil made his appearance and collected a little freebie onto the Aatrox, or from the Aatrox. Meanwhile, we have Lulu running around the map on a mission, assisting the Shen. And we are waiting for a perfect opportunity to ult. Kaisa is being ulted as we speak. And she's being saved. Well, not Kaisa, Ash. My bad. I 
Hell Tito with another appearance of a free kill here. Meanwhile, the Lulu is running away. Help me! But El Tito is turning. And Tito actually survives. And now Shen goes for the Vine Sundra. So he has uh, Wave Clear sorted, Anti Healing sorted, as well as the Teamfight Enchantment with Stone Plate, into now itemizing into the Vine Sundra. Poor Aatrox. If you're not fat enough, and Lilia is good in the game, uh, she's just running circles around you, but the Katarina just uh, said nope. He appeared out of nowhere and just got him killed. But Tito had enough. He's gunning that one down. Who's the assassin now? Gets rooted though and is standing still. That arrow hit? Yeah, I call bullshit. That was indeed bullshit. Any agrees? This Tito is completely cleaning house here. He is completely running over them and Sunfire just secured the cannon. I guess I should buy Sunfire considering how many cannons I lose in the process of farming. Timo being saved by a nicely timed Shen ultimate. I'm assuming Timo is a shutdown. Giving that one away would definitely not be a good thing, so... Nicely done by the Shen. Shen picking up the last Scorpion of this game, considering that Baron is spawning in a few seconds. So make this baby Skana count. Go baby Skana. The entire enemy goon squad is in the upper quadrant of the map looking for better days. Oh, Lilia. Lilia gets cued by Lee Sin and dies. That's what happens. Now the Lulu and the Ash are close. I don't know if Lulu was close enough to actually do something about this. I don't recall, but uh, if so, that's a little bit angry words towards the Lulu. Katarina on the bottom side of the map pushing. Shen is matching this. Has ultimate available in 3 seconds. Stand United, the most broken glo- One of the most broken globals in the game. Oh, she will not be allowed to recall. Yep, that is not a thing that is going to happen today, Katrina. Too bad for you. Bonk. Van Sandra also now being picked up. Shen looking on the map for a potential old angle, just to uh, make sure that he is aware of the situation. Waiting again for another one. Will they close in onto the play? They do. He finds the Ash. He now goes onto the Ash. Ash is now allowed to step forward. He arrives at the play. He just makes sure nobody can do anything. It's a four-man wipe. For people that Baron Nash are now able to be done if Ash actually comes here to do it, because uh, it's not 60 minutes into the game yet, so the next shield is still available, so ending the game is borderline impossible. Ash wants to be a greedy goblin and pick up the midnight inhibitor, as well as the Baron Nasher. Katarina could have done something about this if she truly wanted to, she could have defended this one. Uh, she didn't do so, she went for a bot lane tower, which is uh, a bounty if I'm not mistaken. And losing mid lane inhibitor doesn't really matter. For the next push in, in this game, uh, it will also be after the Nexus shield. Maybe, however, um, depending on how well they play, they might be able to breach the base with this push a little bit earlier than the Nexus shield uh, would fade. And with mid lane down, the Nexus shield was already triggered. And with this, they might have the opportunity to actually end the game. Shen now making sure to walk to the other side of the map, being ready to ult just in time. Clears the next wave. And now he should look mid lane. Okay, they get a kill. He is not looking with ultimate so far. 
His team is now rotating from mid to bot. Or at least should mid, uh, rotate from mid to bot. They should not sacrifice the... Okay, Ash, you are stupid. You should not sacrifice your... Uh, TX like this, but it apparently doesn't matter because they still end the game. <laughs> There's no point to sacrifice a T8 like this. Didn't even deal damage to it. He's level 360. That is a wild number. Against Ornito. Again, no second wind and no perseverance. Perseverance is broken against Orn. Every single time Orn does a big chunk of damage, it's through CC. It's his uh, empowered auto attack through Brittle. And since it's magic damage, getting more magic resist actually makes sure that you take so much less damage. It's an absurd amount. And the trading, like if Shen gets a pull through the Orn with the first ability, it's also an insane amount of damage that is dealt to the Orn. If that connected, it might have been a flash angle. Whoops, my bad. Sorry, apologize. Yeah. Never underestimate the power of Shen first ability. The Orn just learned it the hard way. Because you really just die. Now come on, RNG something insane. Either minion kill? Aw, sucks. Minion kill or turret would have been insane can he live this he can <gasps> oh no oh no <laughs> nobody saw this we skip that was a tough one if that taunt goes through the wall he's actually safe he doesn't die On picks up the scorpion. Oh, it's, a, it's a disaster. And you know, like in top lane against these type of champions, the trades are going to be so long that second wind is going to do such insane numbers. And in this in this exchange, perseverance would have also mitigated so much damage. This on is absolutely crazy. Sadly dies though. But this was pretty dope. But again, if you're playing Shen into this matchup, take Perseverance, take Second Wind. You actually have so so much higher chances uh, of surviving. And this is not meant to um, call him bad or anything. It's just many people playing champions, they, they don't necessarily track how powerful runes can be and what they do many people just play it by ear and just do what feels good so they don't unless they like analyze they don't see the value of uh, certain things like for example second wind oh my god he just saved the man's life and into a tank matchup he goes for a hard steel art this is smart because, realistically speaking, neither of the tanks should be able to kill each other. So both can mutually handshake and be like, well, brother, I'm gonna stack my heart seal. Okay, then I'm gonna stack my heart seal too. But Chen will have the upper hand since he has such insane percentage damage. And On On's damage is more like cooldown gated, like with the brittle stacks. <laughs> you see the fight over the scorpion. Shen should... Yeah, he wins this. But still, again, um, I'll repeat it. Perseverance, second wind, bowling. Oh, does he get the execute? That's quite good. Oh, maybe he could have... Oh, could he have lift? With Riven? I don't know. I mean, he got the Scorpion. 
He got the slow push going. If the scorpion doesn't grief him now, it should be okay. Ah, scorpion griefs him, it's whatever. Wait for the reset, I think. I wish there was like a way of going into practice tool with multiple people at once. So you could just um, limit test these uh, these things. Because you would obviously have to now go into a game and uh, test it in custom. But imagine here, in, in a practice tool, you can just do it and be like, okay, that's an interesting amount of damage mitigated, this must be broken. Then you have like way better um, results. Then, uh, hmm, this feels good. But yeah, Shen completely stomping this on apart without on investing every single bit of his cooldowns. Because Shen's first ability is quite the um, difference maker when it comes to fighting tanks. Cross percentage, max HP damage, do be sounding nice. Heart still being traded left and right. Kill angle for the Shen here. He will walk after him and walk and try to get him with a taunt and gets a kill. He will survive as well. Hopefully nobody is here to actually pick him up after. Uh... <laughs> it's always the same and he loses the wave. Does he lose the wave? Let's go forward. Oh no. Please don't go into the tower. Oh, he, he gets the wave. Losing this wave would be... Look at the free cannons. Losing this wave would would make me uh, hate everything. Orn? Why? Why? I I don't understand why the Orn just did that. And if. If you just look at how long this fight has been going on, and how much damage has been exchanged, nice flash taunt, and gets a kill. This this fight has been going on for 15 business days. It was like a broken support tank swain, uh, tank support kind of thing. Who has the stronger wet noodle in the wet noodle fighting contest? And he's just making some bank with ulting here. Wasn't even necessary at all. Crazy. Oh, and he gets the Soraka. The Soraka heal. Oh my god, with the vine, it's going to be. Oh, you gotta save the Yumi. Hello, press it to gain assist. Hello, Shen. Shen! <sighs> Thank you. He did it, finally. Maybe you could have saved someone. Orn, why? You can just one hit the top. Yeah. The Orn seems to be just like he just likes to fight. He just presses buttons, but he can't win. Like, does he not know that he can't win? Percentage, max HP damage, ladies and gentlemen. Broken as hell. <clears throat> I mean, Aurelia, you should be careful. That's a Shen. And he's not weak. And now we have the Garen O play button. Three, two, one. Duma wait, she's full life again. Oh yeah, she fully off the wave. She has like blade gluttonous grease, yeah. And probably uh, bloodline. Do you see the healing? Oh my god. Yeah, there's the outplay. There was so much healing though. Must be like blades, <laughs> gluttonous and bloodline. Yeah, blade, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeppers. And with the vine, it's going to be even funnier. K 
Okay, we lost our little rat from the sewers. And... Garen is tanking for quite a lot of time, but now the Shen is in the middle, there's not much going to happen. Uh, okay, we need to be a little bit mindful. The wet noodle contest, nobody's able to kill the tanks yet at least. I think Kaiser doesn't have the damage items yet. They have the Seraphine backline. It's going to be very difficult for Shen's team to win this game. They need somebody with anti-shielding, as well as the Twitch to scale into super late game, because the Twitch needs to kill all of them, unless the Riven gets into a spot where she can consistently reset her ultimate, because if that isn't the case, they will just automatically lose. Nice one to the backline. Shen has no primary access to them, which means he gets the freebies here. Oh, she has the minions. Oh, and the fruit. Yeah, the Shen just completely ran over them. Really nicely done. Now Shen will pick up Divine Sandra, adding even more damage to dealing with the Orn. Also, some more extra added sustain. But does the Shen now invest into resistances? Yeah, he does. He needs enter healing, yep. Yeah, but but does he complete it? Like he has a good amount of health. So he should definitely think about the idea of completing the item. Because of the 2% bonus HP reflect. As well as the... Was it slightly amplified anti-healing at plus 10%? I think so. I think it was like... Um, streamlined for... Every anti-healing item at some point. It is uh, 40 with the tier 1 cheap item and 50. Which makes no sense for the upgrade item. Ultimate comes in. Survives barely. Kaisa untouched for the entire fight. Now they're getting turned on. Riven gets the last one on this one. Which means she has an old reset. Always have to be... Paying close attention, look at the Orn being absolutely obliterated by this, by this Shenster. Ah, uh, well, good by good, sir. Is Riven losing up there? No way. Ah, she isn't. But yeah, um, very important. If you see in the kill log that Riven didn't get the kill while having the ultimate, she doesn't get a reset. So if you are lucky that somebody steals the kill from a Riven... You might actually win a fight, because Riven not getting ultimate reset is quite the big deal, because, yeah, it completely changed the tide of a fight, because you get touched by one thing and then you're low enough to be killed by Riven ultimate. Yeah, imagine two or three of these just spammed. Definitely not a nice thing. Yeah, poor, poor guy. You got outplayed, I guess. That was a very late smite. That was even smite. Now Kai'Sa in front, Kai'Sa dies, Orn and Seraphine left. Now the Shen will finally get closer to the tower to pick up the last HP on that one, giving his team some extra gold. Somebody has to pick up the T-Hacks as well. Twitch getting some extra gold from the KFC camp. Shen taking 19 years to clear the wave because he doesn't have uh, Sunfire. Which brings us back to the prob, uh, like the idea behind something in the first game. That he's just able to push waves a lot faster. Mid lane big play happens. T Hex is dying. Yumi ult being thrown out. Zin uh, on engaging. We just see him dash in. Aurelia looking for another play. He is in base. He's matching Irelia's play. He goes in onto a big shield on Riven as well, like full billion HP shield, tanking it out for his team. They took so long to win this fight. Riven falls, but Irelia will also fall nicely done with the taunt by the Shen. And unfortunately, there is still a nice Nexus shield, so ending the game is not really an option right now. But they have a bot lane wave, a bot lane jungle to clear, so there's a lot of things to pillage. So they at least gain a massive benefit from this play. Even though they couldn't end. Okay, Shen has uh, Sunfire available in base. He doesn't have magic resist. He only has raw HP. So technically speaking, it could be very dangerous if the Kai'Sa gets the skill, but the Kai'Sa is giga poor as it seems. I think she had like barely any gold. She has uh, Terminus, Blade, Boots. 
She doesn't even have blade. She has Nash. Yeah, she'll never do damage. Do damage. She's useless. Look, she's fighting tank Garen, tank Shen. You don't have blade. Come on, bro. You're griefing. Go blade into Rift Maker, and then you actually deal damage to them. And then you need Runans as well to kill all the other people. Or otherwise, Twitch is killing you before you kill anyone. But if you go what she is going for, I don't think you. She does anything. Especially defensive boots with Nashes. She doesn't uh, work well combined. He's living quite a long time, considering that Aurelia is DPSing him for 15 years. Uh oh. Need to be really careful here. Just a very sketchy thing. Because uh, if something goes wrong, Death is around the corner, and Death around the corner at this point in the game usually leads to um, minus one on the LP count. Also, um, how are you guys generally doing today? How are you enjoying... I don't know when I will upload this video. I guess Sunday, Monday, I don't know. But yeah, um, I'm wondering if I can do another giveaway soon. I got some codes. So, stay tuned. Oh, nice kill. Shen comes around the corner with the ultimate. And Orn is running away. Meanwhile, the Kaisa is, I don't know, fighting ghosts? Bottom left against the Riven? I don't know, but she lost. And Riven is pushing mid lane, trying to get some gold back. <laughs> Meanwhile, Orn uses ult to clear the wave. And Arela gets another tower. Riven takes a lot of time to kill this objective, because nobody bothers helping her. Yay, we got the dragon. It's a dragon, guys. We got it. It's not even soul. But we got it. So yeah, uh, finally enough, we spent our entire time doing this dragon, when potentially uh, they could have just done Nasher and actually end the game off Nasher, because then, then they have Nasher, they can reset, they can bring the tier hex to Elder, they can do whatever they want to do. But yeah, they chose to do Mountain Dragon, or a single dragon. Oh my god, the Orn just one-tapped, <laughs> nearly one-tapped the Twitch. Orn gets another knock but he was too, he was alone, like, the, the fighting setup was pretty bad. Orn was in for too long, completely alone, nobody was following up. Seraphine also lost most of her tools, spamming shields right now to just hopefully, uh, survive, but it's not enough. Okay, jumps in with E flash. Elder nearly being lost, Twitch secured the Elder. This could have actually been a game losing fight if they lose the Elder. This could have cost them dearly if they lose Elder. Because now the entire enemy team gains so much more damage from all sources thanks to the Elder Burn. That the lack of damage on Kaisa's items could actually, like, not matter as much anymore. It's definitely not an easy game to play. For either, like... For the Twitch, it's rather relaxing because you just can't stand the Nadia, press ult and relax. For the Kaiser, it's more like, hmm, if I make a mistake, I do be dying, so what can I do? And yeah, making a, a mistake in these games where it's already hard for your champion to function, item-wise as well, it just becomes impossible. I think now she had um, Terminus, Riftmaker and Nashers, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And now she goes for Runans. But yeah, she'll have big trouble getting through this massive frontline, because, yeah, um, Blade's entry damage, which then amplifies her execution damage against these high HP targets, is most definitely a pretty cool thing to have. Ult comes in on the Twitch. On is fighting the Twitch in the back line, but doesn't have enough damage to do anything to him. Elder is collecting them one by one, only two people left. So this will be definitely an easy finish with the TX still being nearly full life. 
He taunts in for the fun of it, pops Gargoyle, hits the base, and that marks the end of this video. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, check out their video in the description below, in their channel, and we will see each other for more content very soon. So if you enjoyed this, make sure to come back again.